After escaping from the horrific Scissor Man in Simon Barrow's mansion, the Clock Tower, Jennifer is adopted by Helen Maxwell and moves to Oslo, Norway. A year after the events at the Barrow's mansion, Jennifer is being treated by Professor Barton for her trauma related to Scissor Man. A new string of brutal murders occurs and the victims all appear to have been killed by a giant pair of scissors. After a few altercations with the seemingly immortal Scissor Man, Jennifer and Helen set out to Barrow's castle to try and find a way to stop him once and for all. Clock Tower is a simple game. You're simply tasked with finding a way to escape the seemingly immortal Scissor Man in your current location. This usually involves finding a key or a critical item, then finding the exit. It uses point and click controls with the X button being the equivalent of left mouse click and moving the cursor with the D-pad. You need to move your characters around the environment by clicking on the locations. It's not the most accurate. However, a clock tower is compatible with the PlayStation mouse if you happen to have one. When you encounter the Scissor Man, you'll have to run and find a hiding spot to temporarily escape or use a weapon in the environment to knock him out for a little while. If Scissor Man corners you, you can mash the panic button square to attempt to get away. This works, but isn't totally reliable, as you need to mash fast enough to actually get away, and it makes any subsequent attempt at grappling with Scissor Man more likely to kill you. It's best to just avoid Scissor Man if at all possible, and to opt for the hiding spots or environmental weapons instead. There is some mystical element to the Scissor Man. If you knock him out in a room, you'll automatically leave at the closest door. Then if you immediately re-enter the room, the Scissor Man will disappear and you'll be able to continue what you were doing. You're forced to examine a lot of objects in the environment for clues or items to help you progress. When examining objects, occasionally Scissor Man will pop out to spook you. This means you're going to have to be very choosy with what you actually examine, which can make actually finding what you need run the risk of being forced to run and hide and then return later after you've ditched Scissor Man. With a knife? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. Clock Tower is an early PS1 game, and it's obviously quite dated. Cutscene graphics are pretty well done, but they're also quite rare, being almost exclusively for the game's intro and the endings. The in-game graphics are just not very good. Conveying what objects are works fine, but sometimes it's hard to distinguish which objects in the environment are actually clickable. Some of these require you to be positioned in a certain way, and won't be clickable otherwise. You'll also notice that the actual play area is tiny, it's a fraction of the screen. The remainder is surrounded by black bars that rarely get used. The bottom is mostly reserved for text, but rarely is it used outside of conversations. Voice acting is sparse at best. Most of the dialogue is pure text. Occasionally a line or two will be said fully voiced, but it's a rarity. The few lines that are fully voiced are often extremely low volume, cut out entirely, or are constantly overshadowed by background noise. Edward, I thought you'd still be here. It's dangerous here. Come with me. It's you, Jennifer. Professor Barton? The sound effects and music are repetitive. You'll grow tired of the Scissor Man theme and the main theme very quickly. At the beginning, it's unclear how to use items in your inventory. Certain items will get used automatically when selected on doors, and others require you to pan to the top of the screen, pull it down, and click on whatever you want to use it on. This doesn't really make any sense, especially for keys. You'll get a key, and sometimes it'll be used automatically, but then some others you'll have to use manually. It's really confusing. If you're looking for more of an experience, Clock Tower just doesn't have a lot going for it in terms of story. At its core, it is a mystery, but you're not really given any information until the moments immediately before you get one of the endings.
Overall, Clock Tower is a pretty easy game. Your objectives in each individual scenario are simple, and the areas are mostly small to navigate, except for the final scenario. Whenever Scissor Man appears, it's not scary, it's not panic inducing, it's really just an inconvenience. Your only real option is to hide or use environmental weapons to get away. Hiding spots occasionally just don't work. You'll try to hide, he'll find you, and you'll die and you have to continue from the checkpoint. You don't ever get a chance to use the panic button in these situations, it's just a loss. This is very notable if you go to Rick's house in Scenario 2. The only reasonable way to lose Scissor Man at the very beginning is to run to the bathroom and hide. Three attempts were made that were all identical. The first two resulted in failure, and the third finally succeeded. This happened again in a second playthrough with Helen as the main character. This is the epitome of trial and error gameplay, and it's just not enjoyable, especially in the context of Clock Tower. Thankfully, you can continue almost exactly where you were, as well as save whenever you want in a scenario. This means it's really easy to make it to an ending. There are a lot of inaccuracies with the control scheme. The cursor has a tendency to snap to large objects for you to examine. This would normally be fine, as directional pad controls for a cursor isn't the fastest or most accurate. The issue becomes when you need to click on something smaller in the environment. It's frustrating trying to click on something smaller in the environment only to continually snap to the larger objects that are around it. Sometimes things also just don't become available to click until later, which requires backtracking. It feels like a waste of time rather than some kind of logical progression. Why doesn't Helen see the screwdriver in the desk until you've examined the grate you need to open? Who knows? It's annoying, especially if you're missing something that's really small in the environment and easy to miss, which causes a lot of runaround. The hardest part of Clock Tower is absolutely just grinding through the slow pace and boring dialogue. Great. I wonder if someone has been messing with it. Oh. A first full playthrough of Clock Tower is very short. A casual playthrough with a lot of runaround, not knowing where to go, clocking in at around the 3 hour mark. A second, complete playthrough getting the worst and best endings with Helen was completed in 2 hours, 29 minutes, and 29 seconds. Clock Tower's short length is complemented by having multiple branching paths that actually can feel somewhat different. Your player characters are dictated by choices that don't always seem obvious. There are hints scattered around the various scenarios which give you insight into what influences certain outcomes, and you can use that knowledge to try something different next time. There are 10 endings, with 5 for Jennifer as the main character and 5 for Helen when she's the main character. Each character's playtime is broken into 3 scenarios, with intermissions in between. Regardless of character, scenarios 1 and 3 take place in the same locations. Scenario 2 can take place in one of two locations. The things you need to do are slightly different depending on your characters, but it makes replaying other scenarios not particularly exciting and obviously features a lot of repetitive content. Clock Tower is clearly designed to be played multiple times for the different outcomes. The issue is that scenarios 1 and 2 are largely unimportant to actually replay. You'll need a hidden item in scenario 1 for unlocking certain endings in scenario 3. Ending E, the bad ending, results if you go to the wrong location for scenario 2. That leaves the remaining 4 endings tied entirely to scenario 3. As such, don't waste your time replaying scenarios 1 and 2 multiple times, and just make a save after getting the hidden item in scenario 1 and doing the correct path in scenario 2. You will have to do scenario 1 and 2 as both Jennifer and Helen, but doing them once per character is a lot better than doing them 5 times per character. The endings are largely dependent on who lives and who dies in scenario 3 and finding more hidden items. For whatever reason, everyone from the previous scenarios decides to go to the castle together, which is incredibly ham-fisted and laughably presented. In Helen's scenario, people you've never interacted with decide to tag along for a fun time to a trip to London and explore a castle where an immortal murderer with a giant pair of scissors resides. There are a few sections that just have a 50-50 chance of you being unable to get an ending. Certain characters will either be alive, waiting for you, or have been randomly killed by Scissor Man. This is something that you have virtually zero impact on. It appears to be totally luck-based. Clock Tower is an absolute chore to get through. Drive to even complete the game once was ridiculously low, let alone one for each of the main characters, or ten times to witness all the extra endings.
<laughs> At recommended playing, games are either ascended to the pantheon of games worthy of your time with a recommendation, or are forced to wallow in the miserable muck of mediocrity with a dismissal. Clock Tower's premise and basic gameplay is acceptable at first glance. The deeper you look, the more the cracks start to show. Scissorman isn't much of a threat and exists more as an inconvenience. Something that's there to slow you down by forcing you to leave an area you're trying to solve a puzzle in to hide, only to return. The graphics are acceptable for what they are, the voice acting is simply broken at numerous parts of the game, and the audio mixing in general is poor. The soundtrack mostly exists of two songs that get old really quickly. It's easy enough to reach an ending, but anything besides ending A, the best ending, is unsatisfying as a conclusion. Unfortunately, Clock Tower's slow pace despite being very short and frustrating control scheme make it a boring situation to sit through for one complete playthrough, let alone 10 for all the endings. Clock Tower gets recommended playing's most disgraceful verdict of not recommended.